partial fractions we're now going to look at integration using partial fractions and that comes in when we have to integrate functions that are in the form of fractions and we all love fractions first step have a look at that integral in the light of what we've been doing on integration using algebraic substitution and that little shortcut we can use remember you let u equal the denominator, the bit underneath, which we then have to differentiate, is a shortcut to just writing down what the answer to that integral is. So just pause this video while you just write down what you think the answer is, and then we'll have a look at it. So hopefully you got that as a solution. So if I have to integrate fractions that look like that, with linear denominators involving x remember this is the denominator in the fractions I'm going to call that the denominator from now on and uh, if it's a linear denominator that means there's no x squared terms in there it's just x uh, and there's no x in the numerator so this bit is always the numerator in the fraction isn't it so if there's no x in the numerator and it's nice linear so underneath we can just write down the answer using an algebraic substitution effectively. Uh, I want to have a look at this fraction uh, here. 5 over 2x plus 1 minus 4 over x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is look at this in a bit more detail. So I want to look at this fraction and I want to combine this fraction together. If we think about numbers, if I had to combine two-thirds plus a quarter, if I wanted to add those fractions together or subtract them in the case of the one we're looking at, I need a common denominator. The common denominator of three and four is found by just multiplying three and four together. Three times four is twelve. So I end up doing something over 12 plus something over else over 12 so I'm going to make the denominator 12 and then what I say to myself is right what have I got to do to the 3 to make 12 times by 4 so I times the top number by 4 4 twos are 8 what have I got to do to the 4 to make 12 3 so times the top the numerator in this one by 3 and I'll get it so I end up with 8 plus 3 over 12 and then I add the 8 and the 3 to get 11 over 12. So if I was using numbers I look for a common denominator and then I can add the numerators. Note I don't at this point add the denominators to get 12 plus 12 is 24. All I'm doing is making sure that that denominator is the same. It's exactly the same idea when we look at adding or subtracting fractions involving algebraic expressions. I can only add or subtract those fractions if the denominator is the same. So what I do is I multiply the, denomin the two denominators together. 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 minus 2x plus 1 x minus 2. So I'm going to make the denominator the same by multiplying together. Exactly the same idea. Because remember, at the end of the day, 2x plus 1 is a number. We just don't know what that number is. It's an expression which represents a number. So what have I got to do to this numerator in the first one now? Right. I multiply the denominator here, look, by x minus 2. So if I multiply the denominator by x minus 2, I must also multiply the numerator by x minus 2. If I wanted to, I could cancel out these, and so I'd be left with the same fraction, wouldn't I? What do I do to the other one? What am I going to write down for the other one? 4 times 2x plus 1. Okay. Now I can 
add or in this case subtract my numerators. So I can write that this equals common denominator but what goes on top 5 times x minus 2 minus 4 times 2x plus 1. So I'm just going to subtract those numerators. And then I can use my algebra tools. I can expand out those brackets on the top and collect together like terms to simplify it. Yeah. And I can also multiply out the brackets at the bottom and write down that expression. So just multiply out the brackets, top and bottom, and collect together like terms and see what you end up with. And I'll just pause this video while you have a go, and then we'll look at it. So for multiplying out at the top, I get 5 times x is 5x. 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. Minus 4 times 2x, this is the one that's going to trip us up. Minus 4 times 2x is minus 8x. And then minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. So I get minus 8x minus 4. All over. If I multiply out these brackets on the bottom. Remember I'm going to multiply every term in this one by every term in this one. So 2x times x, 2x times minus 2, then 1 times x, and 1 times minus 2. Every term in one by every term in the other. So 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 2x times minus 2 gives me minus 4x. Plus x minus 2. So that's multiplied out the brackets. And now I've collected together like terms. So 5x minus 8x is minus 3x. Minus 10 minus 4 is minus 14. Over... 2x squared minus 4x plus x is minus 3x minus 2. So I end up with that. So, going back to our original fraction, look, 5 over 2x plus 1. Minus 4 over x minus 2 equals this minus 3x minus 14 over 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. They're equal to each other. We've just shown that because I've just added those fractions, well, subtracted those fractions. Okay? So if I'd have been asked to integrate this, fine, we've just done it easy, I can just write down the answer. What if I've been asked to integrate this? What I have to do is get this to look like that. In other words, reverse the process and then I can do the integral. And that's what the idea of partial fractions is all about. Taking something like this and rewriting it like that. Because if I do that, I can integrate it easily. I just write down the answer. So the difficult bit is not the integration, it's getting this to look like that. And that's the method of partial fractions, and that's what we're going to look at now. And the process is the reverse of what we've just done. Let's have a look at what we've just done. We started off with a fraction, two fractions, and we've added them together, or in this case subtracted them. So what have we done? We found the common denominator by multiplying them together. And then, whatever term, if I take this first one, I had to times that by x minus 2, so I remember to times the top by x minus 2, and the, the numerator in here, I multiply by 2x plus 1, and then we could combine these two together. So the, the idea is that whatever this denominator is, we assume it can be split like that. So that's our start point. We assume it can be written as two separate fractions. And then, all we've got to do 
i say all, all we've got to do is work out what these numbers are on the top.